right. Hi, everyone. I'm Daniel Pickett with AFI TV, and I'm here with Jacob, and we are at Loot Crate headquarters. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. It's Pleasure very to exciting you. to be yeah. here. Pleasure to have you. So this is where all the magic happens. Uh, it's kind of like being in Santa's workshop right now. Yes, a little bit, especially during uh, the, the holiday season and Christmas coming around the corner. It's been... It's been just a frenzy of activity with all the various crates and limited edition crates. So it's been it's been a fun uh, fun thirty days or so. So uh, you guys are continuing to expand. Can you talk about sort of where you guys started from sure. in in twenty twelve, kind of, and what where we're at right now with with the different crates? Sure, sure. So Chris Davis and, and Matt Arvalo, who are the co founders, um, the concept was birthed during a, uh, a hackathon weekend, a startup weekend. And the concept was putting Comic Con and kind of the joy and the and the delight of Comic Con in, in a box, um, and so it just really struck a nerve with the audiences that are out there. And so for the past two and a half years or so, we have focused on Loot Crate being kind of the single core centralized item. Each month, there's a thoughtfully uh, conceptualized theme that is the key driver of all the merchandise that goes in the crate, as well as the YouTube videos that are produced. The podcasts that are released, the magazine that goes in the crate, and so it's it's a full experience. It's a full immersion. It's almost like an episode each month that gets produced. Right. And about four months ago, we released our second subscription line called Level Up, which is a, a wearable and lifestyle accessories uh, offshoot of Loot Crate, more for the folks that are less into collectibles and more into the self-expression. Um, and fast forward to today, we recently launched an anime subscription line as well as a pet subscription line. And this year, we're, we're happy to announce that we did four uh, ex exclusive and limited edition crates, uh, whether it was for video games or TV shows or, or movies, uh, like Star Wars coming up uh, a Friday. So yes. it's, it's been a busy, busy uh, year, and it's been a tremendous amount of fun, and, and we have gotten just such great feedback from our customers. And so, that, so as we look ahead at next year, uh, we're looking forward to making a couple of really big announcements in Q1 as well. So the, the continued growth of our product offerings and kind of diversifying what we offer uh, to be a lot of things to many, many people who are, uh, who are in this world of just fandom and, and pop culture. So uh, you guys were kind of the originators of the, the geek box, really. There's a lot of imitators and a lot of people that have, right. have come, come after. What do you guys... How do you continue to sort of stay out in front of all that sure. and, uh, you know, just sort of separate yourselves from, from the other noise? Sure, sure. Um, I would say what really differentiates Loot Crate from everybody else are, are two key things. One is really listening to the customer. We have an, an enormous social footprint, uh, 2.3 million Facebook, uh, Facebook likes. Um, a million plus uh, Twitter followers and, and and the like and so everything across all the social mediums I think we guesstimated some 50 million impressions a month which is tremendous for a company of our size sure. and so what that means is we have an active listening division of the company that are speaking to customers listening to their social uh, interactions and, and really listening to, uh, to engage and to improve what we offer to the customers, um, and so the company was born on this, on this, on this concept of really understanding the customer and being the customer. Um, and then the second piece is, is each month has a theme. And again, we could just merchandise items into the box, which would be much much easier. <laughs> but planning out the themes 12, uh, 12 months in advance, buying the merchandise four to six months out and making sure that the themes are dialed in with key launch events, whether it's video game releases or movie releases or what have you, and working directly with our partners at Warner Brothers or Fox or Bethesda and Activision. So really trying to connect all the dots mm -hmm. of, of the moving pieces, which is, again, it, it's, it would be easier if we just put stuff in a box, but um, it's, it's that extra level of effort and the attention to detail to ensure that it's a fun experience and it's a new experience and, right. and it is a delightful experience um, a month in and month out. Yeah, the, it's the difference between, you know, just stuffing a bunch of leftover stuff in a box and what you guys do, which is actually actually curate yep. an experience. Yep. Uh, and I think that's 
that's why fandom has reacted so strongly yeah. to you guys yep. and, and have come to you. So on average, how long does it take to put together a regular monthly box? Um, I, I will say it, it's about four months. It's a four-month lead cycle. Okay. So from concept to purchasing, I think the purchasing uh, happens somewhere between a four- to five-month window. Uh, especially at the volume that we ship. Mm -hmm. So we currently ship about half a million crates a month to about 30 countries globally. So to execute all of that takes, and, and we need to get the commitments in fairly uh, fairly far out. So I would say outside of 90, 120 days. So it, it's, a, it's a pretty lengthy process. But again, it, these are all fun brands to work with. And, and it's a box full of toys. So what's, you know, what's, what's not to like? It's a good gig. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you've been doing this for three years now. Are there still sort of nail-biter months where, you know, something's not here or it's all hands on deck to get them packed, that sort of thing? Does, does that still happen or, um, or is, is it down to a science No, it's now? not quite down to a science yet. And I think especially as we branch out into other, um, other genres like anime, we just launched anime. We're in the second month of anime and... Um, trying to get the timing right around key temple events or even manufacturing deadlines or hurdles or or you know Chinese New Year where the entire country basically shuts down for a month yep I mean you know the drill so there are still some nail biter months and even getting our Star Wars crate um, limited edition Star Wars crate done in time to still celebrate ahead of the movie and not after the fact and just getting all the merchandising so the merchandising and the buying teams are, uh, are doing a tremendous, tremendous job getting everything to our warehouse and, and so that the team can start to pack and, and, and ship all these crates out. Uh, but there are still some, some items that are down to the wire. All right. And, you, you know, you, you talk about listening to the customers. You know, you, you sort of you pour your blood, sweat, and tears into a box, you know, say the Galaxy box yeah. each month, and, you know, you get that to the, the best possible point, and you send that out in the world, and they love it. And then they want more of that. Mm -hmm. Then you have to kind of go back to the drawing board and reinvent that theme potentially, sure. right? Sure. Does that happen? Um, it does happen. And we've already started to anniversary a few of the themes that have been okay. uh, big hits. So this year we had uh, Heroes and Villains that came back as an anniversary from last year. And I think a lot of these themes are, are somewhat easy to, to anniversary because of whether it's a key movie launch that really goes nicely with the theme. Or, or a big video game release. Uh, Fallout this year was a, a massive, massive movie launch. Yes. So we had a Fallout for a limited edition crate, as well as in our loot crate, we had uh, a couple of Fallout, uh, Fallout items. Uh -huh. And so it is easy enough to recreate kind of that delight, but we still want to have it be new and exciting and, and put a new spin on it. Uh, and so that's, that's again, a, a fun challenge that, that we'll gladly accept. So as you're looking at your you know sort of calendar year of, of what you know you're, you're going to put together mm -hmm. and you know you're you're basically not just putting things in a box you're generating content That's so right. yeah. do you just gather everyone together and go who knows about this who can you know contribute something to this yeah so if um if you were to kind of visualize what a calendar looks like of all of the key tentpole kind of pop culture events whether it's a comic-con san diego or whether it's deadpool launching or, or, or a key movie in, in fall of 2016. So we, we map out all of the key events that are coming up um, and then we cross section it with what are the themes that we have in mind. And it is this cross coordination of fun themes around events and some things will fit, some things will feel a little bit shoehorned. And so we have to be careful to not kind of force it and take a step back. And so it is, it, it's that level of planning and then the second piece, which is the more challenging piece, is who are the vendors and the manufacturers? Can we get the merchandise? Mm -hmm. um, and then we sometimes will go out and create our own products. Right. And so uh, for our cyber crate uh, in celebration of Terminator, um, we had a Terminator skull manufactured specifically and exclusively for Loot Crate. Mm -hmm. uh, for our time crate, we had uh, we work with the manufacturer to um, manufacture a replica of, of the hoverboard. Right, And so when we do that, then it requires a little bit more planning as to uh, conceptualizing and blueprinting and, and, and getting some, some, uh, some samples made. And so, um, so it depends on, and, and so those are, those are some of the complexities of, of kind of how the sausage uh, making happens here, right. uh, if you will. Uh, but it is, 
it is a multifaceted approach to how can we really um, celebrate some of these the key temple events and 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 give the consumers and our, our looters a, a, an amazing experience month uh, month in and month out. And is that something you guys would like to move more into, generating your own original product for that? Or uh, are you sort of happy with the original um, you know, template I think, of... I think we're open to both. And, and again, when we... Um, after each month closes out, we actually send a survey to our customers. Okay. And so we get a tremendous amount of feedback as to what they like most, what they like least, and it, it actually helps shape the, the future buying patterns of merchandising or manufacturing. And so we've learned a lot from these surveys and, mm-hmm. and customer feedback as well. Um, and so we're open to both. I think um, we wouldn't necessarily force customers to just like our own branded products and right. merchandise. And we have such great partnerships with the likes of, of DC and, and, and Fox and, and uh, even for January, we, we work closely with Threadless. Uh-huh. Um, and, and so there are opportunities to to deliver a great experience, whether we manufacture um, or, or we use a, a third party or a partner. Um, in terms of content, we have, uh, we, we've started to really uh, increase our footprint on YouTube. And whether that's our first party content that our team, Loot Crate Productions, is, is uh, producing, or whether we're working with a lot of the key influencers out there like the the Smosh, uh, the Smosh Games guys or, right. or uh, PewDiePie. And so we're exploring what that feels like if we were to have a little bit more just customized content for Loot Crate. Mm-hmm. Um, let me give you a key example. for uh, In celebration of Back to the Future Day, we actually had a DeLorean brought in here. We filmed the three-part series. And it was a lot of fun. Our, our, uh, our looters and, and folks on YouTube really enjoyed it. And so even that in itself of writing the script and getting the, getting the actors and, and getting the props here and everything, um, this is something that we do each month. And what does that feel like if we were to really scale that out and, and have a kind of a production footprint that is, is uh, not, not in addition to, but it could be kind of the central, central destination for, for looters and, and uh, folks that are in the uh, fandom world, so something definitely uh, worth exploring further in uh, in the new year. And you know, having done this for you know three years now, do you have more studios like calling you guys where you're not having to go and sort of explain that yep. everywhere else? So yep. Yep. you're you're getting the phone calls we instead are. of having to place the calls. We are, and and I think um, that inflection happened, you know, several several or <laughs> many months ago, um, and, and so there's no shortage of options on partners to work with and, and uh, interesting franchises or, or IPs to really feature. Um, so it, it's a fun problem to have and, and it's, uh, yeah, there are a lot of inbound requests and, and conversations happening. And is there like some sort of toast or celebration or send off at the end of each month when all the boxes are out the door and before you have to sort of start all over again? I believe there used to be a little bit of a breather, but but again, now that we have four crate lines, uh, our subscription lines, as well as the four limited edition crates that we pulled off within, I would say, less than a three month time frame. So I think the entire company is looking forward to taking a little bit of a breather after the Christmas season and and, and celebrating and toasting. And we just had our uh, holiday party last Friday, so it was, it was a chance for us to just kind of toast the success and, and just the tremendous growth that we've experienced in the last three years and, and this year uh, being no different. Is there a, a company or a product or something that you guys have been pursuing for a while that you haven't quite uh, been able to secure for a loot crate yet? Kind of a, a white whale for you guys yet? Huh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, th- I think for the most part, whether it's working directly with the studios or the uh, licensors or working with the licensees I think for the um, for the most part by and large we've been able to get the products and the merchandise and the and the um, the licensing agreements um, for for the items that that, that have been merchandised I think uh, we're learning as we go about kind of the nuances of anime for example mm-hmm. and and what it is to work with Japanese primarily owned licensors or um, as we get into pets, which is kind of a, a new category for us, but it's the same genre of geek and gaming and, and fandom. So I think there's 
some lessons that we'll learn along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for the most part, it, um, we've, we've had really supportive partners that have, uh, and, and even when we show up at their offices with, with loot crates or, or if we announce things like the limited edition crates, there's still a lot of delight from even from grownups like, like us who, are, who have been doing this for a long time. And so, uh, yeah, we've, we've just, we, we're thankful to have such great partners who have been, uh, been very supportive of the business. Right. So with the, with the pet crate, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the pet crate in, in a, a video that's coming up. But just, you know, with people... If you're going to put a pair of socks in here, mm -hmm. you know, or, or a t-shirt, you've got the sizes. Yep. So you can still do sort of sizes of animals, yep. but there's a, there's, a, there's a wide range of animals. How far do you go? You got your dog, your cat, your yeah. guinea pig. Right, right, you right. You know, your fish. Where, where does it end for that? Where do right. you decide how that works? Um, so that's a great and funny question. So the initial launch, for the inaugural launch, we decided to kind of keep our own sanity in place by only going with dogs okay and only three sizes small medium large um, and I think that's we've seen that across other pet subscription or pet um, apparel brands um, in the near future we will now bifurcate this to dogs and cats okay so now that will double the number of sizes and, and whatnot um, and I think beyond that, it's really based on consumer demand and, and what, what looters really tell us that they, they want to see. If it's a guinea pig size or if it's for their pet armadillo, we will, uh, we will try to accommodate as, as needed. Um, and so it's, again, this is where the feedback loop is very important to us and, and listening to our customers tell us, this was great, this is not so great. And if people want little tchotchkes that go into their fish bowls, then... And if there's enough demand for it, we will definitely look into it. So if the Canary Coalition shows up That's at your right. front door, That's you right. will listen to them. That's right. All right, fair enough. Now, I'm sure this is probably like trying to pick your favorite child, but do you have a favorite crate from the last year? You know, just personally? I, personally, I am a huge fan of the uh, the Time Crate. Uh, okay. So Time was, uh, was October. Uh -huh. And just because there's that nostalgia and that there's that just... The fondness of watching Back to the Future, and even just on TV, if I see it, I'll, I can't stop myself from watching, uh, especially the second one. And, and so, you know, the celebration of Back to the Future Day uh, in October was a lot of fun. Um, and having a hoverboard in there, and having, uh, and we also had a Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Adventure T-shirt. Right. So, brands that I grew up with, and movies that I, I grew up watching, and so it was just. It was a lot of fun, and my kids, not knowing what a hoverboard is, they were playing around with it, um, and they, they had a great time. So I think that one, to date, is, is my favorite. I okay. think my kids would argue the summon crate with a Pokemon beanie and a bunch of card games and, and such, uh, that would, I think they, that was their favorite. Now, uh, there has to be some amount of headache working with you know the Postal Service and, and things yes. like that. Yeah. What's sort of your, your biggest headache? What keeps you up at night? as far as shipping out thousands and thousands of boxes all over the world. Yes, um, so I think the in terms of domestic shipping, we've got it down to a pretty good science, although holiday season and weather delays, it's going to be a little bit rough on, on, uh, on customers and, and looters. Um, but the international piece, uh, which, so it, the international market has really come to us. Mm -hmm. and has just organically been drawn to Loot Crate by word of mouth and, and some social media, but we haven't actively pursued, and we're already at close to 30 countries internationally. And so with that kind of love and support, we want to deliver the crates in time to them and in and, and time uh, so that there are no spoiler alerts internationally. But we come across a lot of these, um, a lot of hurdles with specific international markets. And so... That's something that we're looking to, and we're working hard to try and address in the new year. Um, and, and we, because it's theme driven and it's a mystery, our goal is to get it into the hands of all looters globally within about a five to seven day window, which is not a, not a small feat. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big ask. It is. And, and so, again, especially all, once it leaves your hands. That's right. And it's that's all right. out of your control. Right. And what's, uh, what's really fun is also there is this, uh, there's this almost a, a, a contest-like mentality as to people want to be the first to unbox. Right. And, and, and they want to be the first on YouTube to unbox this month's uh, crate and whatnot. And so we want that, that experience to uh, not spoil it for anybody globally. So it is, 
that's that's the the one thing that we're really trying to get a handle on is to how do we con- how do we provide continuity of experience across the globe, especially as we open into newer markets, right? Um, and as we want to be a, a global brand one day, um, how do we address some of those issues? So I think all fixable problems, um, just uh, small pain points from here or from here to there, but you know, uh, addressable issues. H- have you had anyone so desperate to be first to unbox that they say, "I'll come pick my box up"? Uh, I live close. Have you had that happen yet? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we've had some of those requests come in through customer support. Um, we, you know, we, we don't necessarily have a like a, a will call. If we did, I'm sure the operations guys would, uh, <laughs> would probably kill me. Uh, but you know, I, I, I pe- there is there is this pent up demand and this excitement. And going into the end of our kind of retail calendar month, we have a countdown series of of just giving a little bit more information and a little bit more. Um, insight as to what's coming and so there's there's certainly a lot of pent-up demand going into when will I get my crate right well can you can you give us any hints about what we might see in in 2016 so 2016 um, there are so I, in the first in the first two months first two three months of the year there are key movie launches okay um, the likes of uh, Deadpool as well as uh, Batman vs Superman so we'll be working closely with uh, with those studios and brands, and uh, we have we have a lot of fun uh, planned out for what will be in the crate as a part of celebrating those uh, those two key movie uh, launches. Um, and beyond that, you know, I think San Diego Comic Con will bring something amazing. So the, we're already in the planning stages of what that experience is going to be like uh, within the within just the experience itself at Comic Con, as well as with the crates that we bring. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sold actually a good number of crates on the train ride <laughs> down to San Diego <laughs> right. on the Amtrak, and so that, that's a really fun, just fun story of how we run into looters all the time. Sure. Um, but yeah, we have we have a lot of uh, we have. I think the San Diego Comic Con announcement will be will be pretty huge, and so I don't want to give too much away, but just stay in tune. Uh, you know, stay tuned for more. It's uh, only six months, seven months of waiting, so Gosh, yep, it'll be here before we know it. That's true. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for your time. Uh, We're going to put all the contact links for Loot Crate in in the information below, and we're going to have some more Loot Crate videos coming up. We're going to do some unboxings here in just a little bit, too, so watch out for that on AFI-TV.